So congratulations. You guys have made it to the most important session here at Build Conference. Uh, certainly I think so. I hope you guys think so uh, here at the end of the session. Uh, I've got good reasons for saying that. Uh, so uh, I, I do mean it. Congratulations. Thanks for, thank you for coming to the session. Uh, so uh, our title here is a little bit unwieldy, uh, Build Intelligent Analytics Apps with Microsoft Graph and Azure Capabilities. Um, so let me tell you about what we're actually talking about here today. You heard Satya on Monday talk about Microsoft 365 and Microsoft Azure as two development platforms. Uh, but we don't believe that they need to be separate development platforms. We believe that they are better together, chocolate and peanut butter, that you should be able to use Microsoft 365 with Azure. And so all of the strengths of the data connections of Microsoft 365, of course, Office 365, Windows 10, Enterprise Mobility and Security, uh, that all come from the Microsoft Graph, being brought into uh, the secure boundary uh, where customer privacy is paramount in Microsoft Azure, where, of course, there is uh, a huge uh, amount of capabilities within Azure, and then all of them you know, help employees be pr productive, work uh, in the cloud and hybrid, intelligent and trusted with, this, with the security and compliance posture of Microsoft Azure. So we really want to combine these things so that you can work with them together. So we're adding capabilities so that you're able to do this. Uh, to start, I want to talk about a couple of custom customers that we've already been working with on what they've been able to do with this. The first one is Harmony. Unfortunately, uh, Yakov from Harmony was, was unable to make it today. Uh, but they are building this, uh, this new application So Harmony is uh, announcing Harmony 10. Uh, it's a brand new application with this capability, leveraging the data access of Microsoft 365 with the data tools that we have in Microsoft Azure. Uh, imagine that, uh, or consider Angela, uh, an employee at Logjam Tours, who, which is a tour operations company, where she gets in in the morning uh, and she wants to know what she should be working on today, right? And so she's thinking about, hey, I've got this upcoming tour that I'm helping organize, uh, this tour of Paris. And so uh, she, these are the topics that she is interested in. By opening up Paris tour, she sees the areas of the tour that she's been in communications with. Uh, she knows that working out the travel is the most important. So she navigates here into European logistics and by selecting this, she doesn't just have you know, her Outlook emails uh, about European logistics or about travel. Uh, she doesn't just have her SharePoint files. Uh, with Harmony 10 uh, and, this up, and this product, all of the information for this user is available here in the European logistics, uh, whether it's in OneDrive for Business, uh, whether it's in Outlook, or whether it's in Teams. And of course, uh, clicking on this brings her right into OneDrive for Business, into the SharePoint site, uh, where she can work immediately on this project. So what's new about this is that this, these topics, they aren't just from Angela's information. These topics are extracted and analyzed from the entire organization. These topics that you see here, European logistics, uh, Paris tour, contracts, legal, these are topics that the entire company is interested in. Now, Angela only sees the topics that uh, she is personally involved with, but because Harmony 10 is, ex is working across the entire organization, these topics work for the entire organization. So, uh, unfortunately, Yakov couldn't be here today, but when they tried to build this Previously, with the existing functionalities before we talked to them about the functionalities we're about to talk to you about, they're having some, some real problems, right? How to extract and process and analyze all of an employee's, all of an organization's email and documents, right? Uh, at enterprises, this can be even millions of rows. Uh, this can be pretty difficult. As well as customers' privacy, uh, getting access to the entire tenant 
all emails, all documents, all chat conversations. Uh, if you've been developing uh, with Microsoft Graph for long, you'll know that this is uh, a real challenge. So if you want to get started with Harmony, uh, Harmony 10, uh, go ahead and snap the QR code or harmon.ie slash early dash access uh, if you're interested more in that product. But next I want to invite up Eric Rivas from Limeade, the CTO there, to talk about what Limeade has been building. Cool. Thanks, Abram. Hi, my name is Eric Rivas. I'm co-founder and CTO of a company called Limeade. We're based in Bellevue, Washington. And uh, we've been in business for about 12 years. Uh, my co-founder partner, uh, Henry Albrecht, who's the CEO, and our chief people officer, uh, her name is Laura Hamill, uh, who used to work at Microsoft. Um, back then, um, the conferences were talking about Ajax and Web 2.0 and ASP.NET web forms and code behind. So we've been in business for a while. Uh, for a little bit of background, uh, LimeMate is a engagement platform that integrates uh, well-being, engagement, uh, social recognition, and inclusion into one kind of seamless experience uh, that helps companies improve their company culture and it helps employees feel more connected at work. And what I have here on the screen is an example of one of our insights dashboards that shows employee engagement at a company. And what you can do with our dashboards is really slice and dice the data, look at different subgroups. Uh, so in this example, the boxes on the right and the red are subgroups that have low employee engagement, and the boxes in the green are areas where they have high employee engagement. So you can imagine lots of different scenarios where um, you know, a company buys another company and you want to you know, see how the uh, employee engagement is at the new company. Or you could imagine a scenario where there's a new vice pres president of marketing at some uh, group and you want to look at the employee engagement there. Uh, and so we've done a lot of uh, studies and research on the correlation between employee well-being and employee engagement. And uh, we have actionable kind of recommendations and activities that, uh, that the product does. Um, wanted to just highlight a couple of uh, research items. So at Limeade, we have this uh, research think tank uh, that has uh, data science folks, machine learning folks, organizational psychology folks, and things like that, stats folks. Um, and a couple years ago, we partnered with a company called Quantum Workplace to put together a research study across hundreds of companies and thousands of employees that responded. And uh, these are some of the kind of amazing statistics that we saw in, in the data from the respondents. So 99% of employees who feel that they have high well-being and their company has organizational support for them uh, recommend their company as a best place to work or a great place to work. Um, 91% of employees that have high well-being and organizational support are less likely to leave, so turnover. And companies have 38% more engaged employees when they feel that their employee cares about their well-being. So these are some pretty compelling stats. Um, and uh, so we got to thinking, what can we do um, that would help scenarios for uh, things like busy managers? Uh, so if you could imagine for a moment um, uh, a busy manager, Miles, or Jane, let's say Miles. Miles has seven direct reports and um, is, cares about the well-being of the employees, um, but has a lot of urgent client meetings, has to cancel one-on-ones, uh, might have to reschedule them. And so the employees feel uh, disconnected and so what we thought is, uh, what if every Monday morning, uh, miles or busy managers that are having to skip one-on-ones, not intentionally, just because they're busy and they have urgent th stuff going on, uh, if they could receive an email like this. So not sure if you can see the tiny fonts, but it says, hi, Miles. We found a time to work on this activity with your team. And the title of it is, have regular and meaningful one-on-ones 
for 100 points. And then it has a little did you know box there. Um, in this case, it's a fictitious Fabricam company, but imagine real data like uh, uh, we, I was showing earlier. Uh, employees of Fabricam are 38% more engaged when their well-being is cared for at work. And it has uh, three people that uh, Miles hasn't had one-on-ones with. So I know Pat, Mary, and James, for example. And so uh, Miles could go in there and say, okay, I'm going to have a schedule a one-on-one -on -one with Pat at noon on Monday. And uh, so this is using... Um, a combination of uh, Microsoft Graph APIs to look at calendar data, free busy slots, to look at organizational hierarchy, like who works for who, um, and also actionable cards, so that it's not just a static email, but I just scheduled it. Um, the cards kind of state changes, and uh, let's say I, I was Miles and I clicked uh, View on Calendar. Uh, then in this case, it brings up the meeting invite with a video. Uh, and the video is a video on how to have a meaningful one-on-one -on -one with your employees. And so it, it things like asking people how they're doing before you start getting into all the status of all their projects, for example. Uh, so this is uh, something that, and then it also shows that the one-on-one -on -one with Pat Smith has been scheduled for noon, you know, next Monday. So this is the, the scenario that we thought through of the busy manager. Uh, we've also implemented a, a few other scenarios for people that have busy schedules, like adding a mindfulness video for you to watch uh, as well and things like that. Uh, so that's, that's what we built, and I just had a couple of thoughts on how uh, these features um, that we've been working with help our scenario. So the first one is we were able to analyze uh, behavior across managers, uh, not just our, our one company, but across our entire book of business, and be able to correlate that with the well-being and engagement data that we have from employees. Uh, because we have things like annual surveys, uh, we have uh, employee listening sort of pulse surveys that we do weekly, uh, sometimes quarterly. Uh, so we're able to, sh to show things like the, the stat about the 38% more engagement directly inside the email. Uh, so those analytics. Uh, the other thing I thought was popular or powerful is that uh, we can ask for only the data that we need to complete the analysis. So with the graph API, it's very powerful, but you can also have access to a lot of stuff. And so in our case, all we really needed was the user hierarchy uh, free busy slots on people's calendars and who you're having kind of the participants of the meeting. So what's cool about that is in the Azure marketplace, the customer can say, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll install the Office 365 connector and then a workflow is initiated to an IT administrator who sees um, which are the fields that um, are going to be approved and this company is going to have access to rather than like unknown or, or everything. So I think those are kind of the three uh, key takeaways that I have uh, from uh, working on this project. Um, we're going to keep getting feedback from users and keep evolving it and improving it. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Eric. So imagine your company that can understand the organization on uh, all of the topics that this organization is working on, really understanding how all of these topics interrelate and who's working on them, like Harmony is doing, having insights uh, across you know, the well-being of all of the employees of an organization, being able to do that analysis. Of course, these are two very specific examples from two very specific partners. But when you think about Microsoft Graph, there's really an incredible amount of stuff that you can do. You've, you've seen this picture uh, in the various keynotes and in the sessions already where Microsoft Graph has access to all kinds of information, right? This is uh, anything that a, a knowledge worker is doing and working on. However, this is just representing one user. Really, an organization is working on tens of thousands of users, uh, the very largest enterprises, hundreds of thousands of users, uh, and the scale is absolutely ginormous. Uh, the, the stats on the screen, maybe you've seen them already, but you know, four trillion emails 
Uh, more than one billion meetings created every single month. With more than 135 million active users, uh, it can be pretty scary to fi figure out what you're going to do with this much information. Uh, it's a lot to manage. So today, we are taking the same functionality that underpins workplace analytics and making it available for you guys to develop. If you're not familiar with workplace analytics, you can see here that this is processing 2,000 different employees. Uh, and if you look at that trend, it's looking at a year of those employees' data. This is tens of millions of records. Uh, if you're trying to get these out a few rows at a time, uh, you're going to be uh, at it for quite a while. So workplace analytics uh, works on several different scenarios. You see here uh, collaboration and when employees are working during the day, when they're working after hours. Uh, workplace analytics has many other scenarios too. Um, we'll talk more about scenarios uh, coming up. So think about what's necessary for this, for, for this much data processing from Harmony, from LimeAid, from Workplace Analytics. You're going to need a scale-up system to be able to get this data into Microsoft Azure. You need the security posture to only get the access to ex exactly the data that you need so that you do not need to get the content of the CEO's email to the CFO's, or you're probably going to have a hard time selling that application. You need a way to sell this application. Uh, so we'll be talking about how the sales process works and how you can leverage Azure Marketplace. And finally, we'll be talking about the security posture of Azure and letting the, da the data remain within the customer's control the entire time that you're processing it. So let's start uh, by taking a look at Data Factory. Just going to open up the demo here. So some of you may be familiar with Azure Data Factory already. Beginning today in our private preview, you can use Azure Data Factory once you're added to our private preview and connect to Office 365. So if we want to go create a new connection, Office is listed here right in services and apps the same way that you'd connect to any other data source. Uh, you provide your credentials. Um, this, uh, I've already created one, so let's look at uh, creating a new pipeline, or rather, let's start with a data set. So Azure Data Factory works on data sets. Uh, let's do meetings. So let's create a data set that is meetings. We'll connect to this Office 365 connection that we already created. And I'll open up the events data set. I recognize that title from graph. Since we don't want to get the entire history of meetings, let's just get the last uh, week or so. Uh, you could get the entire history, but let's just get a week. And the schema here you'll recognize is also being the Microsoft Graph schema. So all of the properties that you are familiar with when calling Microsoft Graph for events, you can see right here. So let's remove the body of the email, because uh, and uh, let's see, does somebody see anyone see the subject? Let's remove these two because we don't want to get access to those because our scenario won't need it. Okay, so now we have a meetings data set. If you're not familiar with Azure Data Factory, uh, it's really incredibly robust. So we'll start. By a, with a copy activity selecting the meetings data set that we just created. Uh, in this case, I'll send it to Azure Data Lake Storage. Uh, there's lots of advanced settings that I won't get into. If we want to uh, process this in our workflow, uh, we can drag and drop uSQL. Uh, if we want HD Insight, Spark Environment, uh, we can specify the scripts and the logic that we want to perform in all of these things and send the output to wherever we want. Uh, so I don't have that part in my demo, so let's just go ahead and trigger just the regular copy of the graph data over into uh, Data Lake Storage. Whoops, I forgot that I needed to publish it. Let's go over to an existing, existing data set. So this is uh, similar, except it was for messages. 
All right, so now we've created it. And that's it. I'll show you a little bit later uh, that the data is flowing now into data lake storage. Uh, we're getting, uh, in this case, it's a demo tenant, so only dozens of rows, uh, but this works. Uh, it's built on the same platform as Workplace Analytics. It scales just like Workplace Analytics for the very largest enterprises. So the consent model that you're familiar with, uh, this is an OAuth screen. Uh, you're pretty familiar with this one. So uh, you know that uh, you need to go talk to a user, uh, have this user say, yeah, well, you can access my mailbox, you can read my contacts, you can read my tasks, you can read my events, you can read my messages, uh, and uh, convince them to go click approve. So let's go click approve. All right. Uh, now you need to talk to the next user uh, and get them to approve. Uh, and then you need to talk to the next user uh, and get them to approve. And then you need to talk to the tens of thousands of employees that are in the organization and get them all to approve access to all of their content if you actually want that full graph of the entire organization. Or the other model uh, is to uh, get access to the entire organization. Uh, so you go talk to their IT department and you tell their IT department, my application uh, is going to need access to mail.read. Uh, it will contain all my application anytime it wants can access uh, your CEO's mailbox, uh, your frontline worker's mailbox, your CFO's mailbox, and every person in between. And I hope you don't also want events because uh, uh, it doesn't get much better uh, when you add in those other models. So. Uh, if you've been developing for a while, you know that this is really tricky, uh, even at small business, uh, but at enterprise, uh, this is basically a non-starter. Uh, this just is not going to happen. Uh, they're never going to approve that. So I'd like to introduce you to Office 365 Privileged Access Management. So Office 365 Privileged Access Management is a new set of capabilities that we have in Office 365 for Private Preview, where once it is enabled, you'll see all of the data access requests uh, for applications that are being installed and are accessing or requesting access to this data. Privileged access management is also going to be used for other users accessing data, other sorts of scenarios like that in Office 365. But we're talking about analytics applications. So you can see here, it's really simple to go approve or deny it. Um, we're still working on this, on this UX, so I need to show you um, the, oh, let me grab. Uh, instead of logging in, I'll just scroll up. So the administrator will have in the UX all of the information that they need in order to make an informed consent decision. Uh, we see the, the reason. We see exactly which data type. We say exactly which columns. So in this, in this example, uh, we're getting data for, from the messages table, uh, the same graph messages schema. Uh, we're getting the from, has attachments, columns. Uh, we know what the application is. We know which users, right? This is for the sales org. And so if I want, I can go navigate to that application's terms of service in the, in the marketplace that I'll show you a little bit later. We can look at the privacy policy. And we know exactly which users, exactly which application are going to be uh, included in, in the access. All right, so that's privileged access management. So, Third, uh, let's talk about how the sales process works. Uh, so for applications particularly getting access to the entire organization, uh, it's going to be months of hunting them with your salespeople. Uh, it's going to be a long, complicated, uh, permanent DevOps position. Uh, and it's a lot of work. Probably in your, in your companies, uh, a significant portion of your talent is focused just on getting people to buy the product. So we want to... Uh, give you Azure Managed Applications with Azure Marketplace uh, to be able to do this a lot easier. So if you're not familiar with Azure Managed Applications, and we haven't talked about them at Build before, so you might not be. So Azure Managed Applications is essentially a packaging 
of different Azure resources, any of the Azure resource types that you want to include in your application, any of the logic, right? Any application that you build in Azure is basically what we're talking about. And package it up so that it's really easy to install and maintain. There's a couple of different approaches, uh, ways you can use managed apps. One is, uh, f as an enterprise, you can publish it right into your own service catalog for self-install. Or you can publish it to the Azure Marketplace. And I'll show you the Azure Marketplace next so that it's really easy for anybody to install. Once it's published in Azure Marketplace, uh, it's a few clicks to install this application that you've built that has the right access uh, and has the right data with any Azure resources. Uh, get it installed, and away you go. Managed Applications also has uh, monetization, so you can decide how much you want to charge for your application uh, right there uh, within the interface. So let's talk about how uh, the Azure Marketplace works. This is an application that I published. Uh, it's a sample app. We'll actually show you uh, what this application is exactly made of. Uh, if you get into our private preview, uh, we'll show you how it works, what the, what the parts are. Uh, we've got all of the code behind it. But this is a sample offer that we created. And you can see, just like any app store, right? you have a description, you have the license agreement, the policy, you've got screenshots. Uh, you can set different price points uh, depending on how many users or if you want additional capabilities available. Uh, and just click Get It Now. Uh, there's, a, there's a couple of steps here after this that I'll show you, but um, you know, it's really pretty straightforward. Uh, if you want to be able to sell your application not to uh, 10 companies, uh, but to thousands of companies, uh, you can publish to Azure Marketplace. They can all use this. You don't necessarily need all of these one-on-one -on -one interactions uh, and courting uh, business decision makers for months. So we saw the Office 365 piece. We saw the, uh, the security of Office 365 privileged access management granting access specifically and easily only to the information that the application really needs. Uh, and then we see the data consumed in Azure Data Lake uh, and Azure Web Service. Uh, but of course, that's not the only place you can put it. Uh, if you like SQL Data Warehouse, of course, you can go send the data uh, and transform it into whatever normalized form your application needs over into SQL Data Warehouse. And you don't need web service. You can use Azure Container Instances. Uh, and you don't need SQL Data Warehouse. You can use Azure Cosmos DB. And you don't need Container Instances. You need Azure Functions. Right? Uh, Azure has a lot of capability here. Uh, we're only demoing a few parts of this uh, because uh, we do not have time in 75 minutes to go over uh, all of the things that you could possibly do with uh, Azure tools at your disposal. So let's talk about some scenarios. We talked about Harmony and the topic understanding of the entire organization. We talked about LimeAid and the understanding of employee well-being across the organization and making specific suggestions. Uh, let's talk about a few other categories. We hear these ones from customers all the time. Uh, better customer relations ma ship management, security and fraud, optimize your organization, uh, intelligent workflows within Office 365. So uh, an example of a CRM scenario, uh, who in my company knows my potential customer? Right? This is the one that we just showed you with who knows whom. But uh, our who knows whom sample doesn't include positive sentiment analysis of Azure Cognitive Services. Uh, it doesn't include an Outlook add-in. Uh, so that as my salesperson is actually trying to make that contact and doing that communication in email, uh, they actually have that information and can go get that warm lead right where they're at. Uh, we don't have it in line of business apps uh, that you can develop with Power Apps. Uh, another example, uh, understanding which sales deals are likely to close. We want to consider the history of similar deals. You can use tools like SQL Data Warehouse for that. If you want to drill down or allow the administrator, the report user, to drill down and change and understand that data more fully, you can build a Power BI dashboard for them. In the security and fraud, uh, if you want to understand if any of my customers are trying to commit fraud in their interactions with us. So you can identify a pattern of your customer interactions uh, and your support uh, or your sales with Azure Machine Learning. Now you can run that analysis at scale with Azure Batch AI. Uh, you can, if you find something anomalous, you can go send an email with Microsoft Graph uh, or post an event or uh, any of the other actions with Microsoft Graph. 
Similar scenario for security and fraud. Uh, are any of my employees sharing data externally? Uh, we hear about scenarios like this. So you can use Azure Data Factory with its many, many connections to upload data from wherever your HR stored. Process that with Azure Data Lake Analytics to identify just the messages that are sent externally. Uh, and then you can use the new technology for your very sensitive customers, but with Azure Confidential Computing to host every single bit of that uh, within the confidential VM so that nothing is able to leak out of there. Optimize your organization. Uh, so there's lots of scenarios in this space. How do we connect employees with the right subject matter experts? So we saw a little bit of this with Harmony, but also taking into account which users are experts on this topic. You can mine the conversations with topics with Azure Cognitive Services and use the topic extraction. You can create the real organization chart uh, by creating a graph in Cosmos DB. Uh, so this is the org chart, not that your HR system represents, but who is actually communicating with each other. Capture the, und the undocumented knowledge of a retiring workforce. Uh, we hear about companies that are having problems with uh, their employees are all being more senior, and they're going to lose all of that knowledge. So why not use the new services that were just announced with Azure Cognitive Search to index that communication and gain insights about it? You create a conversational knowledge base uh, and then feed that into Azure Bot Framework and have that available for your new employees with Microsoft Teams. Or diversity and inclusion, uh, create a dashboard. We showed Azure Web Services in the Who Knows Whom application. You can suggest writing tips with uh, the extensibility platform of Microsoft Word so that when you are using Word or maybe Outlook, you can actually suggest ways to be more inclusive with your writing. Uh, and the intelligent workflows flow space, uh, understanding the knowledge that's hidden around in email attachments or in email content. Of course, Graph has this information, but you really need a lot of them. Uh, so let's feed them into Databricks. Uh, and then as each document is processed, as it's saved and modified, let's use Azure Functions to analyze each one of, each, each one of those documents as it comes through. Or your first tier of support, uh, lots of you guys as software developers, you have support systems. So uh, maybe you guys have been uh, responsible for some of that support in the past. I know I have. Uh, so why not index all of your communications that come through your help desk to create your own knowledge base with Azure Search? and put a conversational bot there in your website. So of course, uh, these are the only 12 scenarios uh, that you can build. Uh, we won't allow you to do anything else. So I hope you were not thinking of what your company's problem space is uh, and what you could do with your, all of your customers' uh, communications data uh, available in Azure. So, the, the, the four value statements that we just talked about, uh, scaling up in minutes to a huge amount of data, uh, tens of millions of rows as necessary. You saw you can do that in the UX. Of course, you can use ARM templates. Uh, you don't have to click through the UX. You can include that in your managed application. You only have to get access specifically to the data that you really need, uh, whether that's metadata or whether it really is the body content of those messages, but it's not for the C-suite. You can leverage our store so that it, and managed applications so that it is simple for your customers to install. They already have your privacy policy. They understand how it's going to work. Maybe 100 customers have already installed it already, and now you're just uh, raking in more customer installs. Uh, and keeping the data in the customer subscription so that you don't have to be in control of this data. The customer can delete it at any time. Uh, it's always a responsibility. The customer has uh, that, that control of the data so that you don't need to hold on to it to your application. So if you're interested in any of those things, building at the next generation of analytics applications like we've seen for workplace analytics, uh, and hopefully some of you guys uh, are thinking of scenarios of your own, uh, that are not necessarily the same as workplace analytics, Harmony, or Limeade, or the other dozen scenarios that we looked at. Really, there's uh, an incredible opportunity and value here. And you guys, like I said at the beginning, you're the lucky ones. You guys know about this private preview program so that you guys can get started you know, right away. So you can go to this website, aka.ms slash 0365 analytics preview. Uh, so sign up for our whitelist. Um, 
is provide your tenant ID uh, so that we can make sure that you're added to our whitelists. Um, we'll contact you as we have availability in our private preview program. Uh, if you're not quite sure about whether your scenario works, uh, whether this makes sense for your company or you're not ready to get started, uh, happy to take an email uh, at that address, 0365 analytics at microsoft.com. Uh, of course, I'm on Twitter, uh, at Abrac Jamson. You guys can talk to me there as well. Uh, so, uh, I hope you, I, I don't see enough of you navigating to that website right now. Uh, so, it's still on the screen. You still have a chance. So, thank you all for coming. I hope to see you in our private preview program. I hope I can be working with you to build these applications uh, and really add a lot of value to our joint customers' lives. Thank you, guys.